Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A disturbing discovery, human remains found inside this burned out home. Jason? Devin, an abandoned baby, a missing mother. What police in River Rouge are doing right now to find her. All right, Jason, but we begin in Highland Park where police need your help finding this man you see right here in connection to a rape case. Good to have you with us. You can see from that sketch right there, police got a pretty good description of the attacker. It happened back in May. Police still looking to drum up new leads in the case. Mara McDonald live in Highland Park. Mara. Good evening to you, Devin, and police just passing out this sketch, but let me fill you in on how this happened. This went down at the end of May, like May 27th, right where I'm standing. We're at Manchester and John R. Police telling us you've got a young woman on her way to work around 4 o'clock in the morning. She's walking right here when a guy starts harassing her. He drives up on her on a mountain bike, a black one. Let's take a better look at his sketch. So. Police say he rides up on her and starts trying to chatter up. She wants nothing to do with this. The best description of him is that he is between 20 to 27 years old, about 200 pounds, and his most distinguishing feature is that he has a sleepy right eye. So he's haranguing her. She is trying to get away from him. He hops off his bike, he grabs her, he takes her into an alley, starts beating her up, then sexually assaults her, hops on his bike, and then takes off. We need the public's help. The police departments cannot do this job alone without the public's help. So we're helping by, by putting this information out to the public that we can start receiving some tips on possibly the suspect that we're looking for in this, um, whether he's made some comments that this happened or maybe a passerby drove by and saw what we're talking about. Um, but we're, we're asking the public's help in this point. Back here live, police are telling us at this point they don't have him linked to any other attacks in the area. That doesn't mean he's not responsible for anything else. They really want to find this guy. If you have any idea who this is, Highland Park Police want to hear from you. And if you don't feel comfortable calling them, call Crime Stoppers. We're in Highland Park. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Understandable, the trail, of course, getting colder and colder. All right, Mara. Kim. Now to new developments in the search for the mother of this newborn left in the front yard of a group home in River Rouge. Police said today they're following two new leads in the case. Jason Colthorpe just talked with investigators. He's live in River Rouge tonight. Jason, have those leads turned up anything? It really has not, Kim, and they had two good ones today. They thought were going to lead them to this mother and it hasn't come up right now. They're looking, they're looking at all options. Detectives not giving up on this. They know that there's a mother out there tonight that might be worried about being in trouble for what she or someone else did, and that is abandoning a baby less than an hour after she was born. River Rouge police are going over surveillance video today, trying to figure out who abandoned a newborn baby girl on the front lawn of a home on Alexander Street. We know someone out there knows someone who was pregnant at the time and, and now is without child. And unfortunately, not much more than that right now. But given the baby was found with the full umbilical cord and placenta, there's concern here the mother could be in medical danger. According to doctors, there might be some type of infection that might set in for the mother. So we have been checking local hospitals to see if anyone has come in with any complications of delivering a baby and it is without child. The search has spanned River Rouge and E-Course right now, but that could expand. Police have also seen huge community outpouring of support for this baby girl who survived her first hour of life with no one to care for her. The good thing out of it is that we believe that baby wouldn't have any problem finding a good home. Uh, we've been bombarded with calls and emails of people wanting to adopt this child. Now, obviously, it doesn't quite work that way, but a lot of people, you know, have a lot of concern about this uh, baby. She'll remain in the hospital for another 24 hours or so for observation and then be turned over to Child Protective Services. That, of course, if they don't find the mother and straighten this out in that sort of time, and then the system will work from there. By the way, we're told the baby is doing very well. Kimberly? Oh, that's certainly good news, but we have to mention, Jason, and I know this mother, she's probably scared, she might be young, but we have to talk about the safe haven law, which would allow a mother to, after just hours after having the baby to drop it off in a safe place like a police department, a fire department, or hospital, no questions exactly. asked, and that's what should have been done here.
And it's really disheartening too, Kim, because there are two places within a half mile from where the baby was found, she could have done that. Yeah. They know she's out there and probably scared. They need her to come in, have a conversation, and clear it up. It doesn't necessarily mean she'll be charged with something, mm -hmm. but they've got to get to the bottom of it. And of course, uh, they say in this day and age, with that law, this shouldn't happen. And officers here, by the way, with 20 years experience, say they've never seen it happen in River Rouge. Yeah. Well, yeah. good thing that baby's going to be okay, too. Okay, Jason, thanks. A man dies after crashing into an Ann Arbor building. We've got video from the scene at Washtenaw between Berkshire and Vinewood Boulevard. You see this silver Ford Focus hit the building. The driver of the car died. Police don't know yet what caused him to crash. So that investigation continues this afternoon. A man's body found in a burning home on the city's west side. The man had been shot in his head. Police say the home on Santa Maria near West McNichols and Losser Road was set on fire after the shooting. According to police, the home may have been used as a possible marijuana grow operation. So far, no arrests have been made. Well, the heat and the humidity, as promised, creeped up uh, for Metro Detroit to be under an air quality alert. And look at the hazy sky that we've got right now from our downtown sky camp. Uh, yeah, you can just feel it when you walk outside. You can see it. Looks like you can cut it with a knife yes, almost looking yes. at that picture. Let's get over to Ben. Uh, is this going to stick around for a while, Ben? The humidity will, like him and Devin. The good news is, is this is probably going to be it for the air quality alert. It looks like the air quality getting a little bit better. Even as the heat and humidity continue to climb later on this week, there's a, just a little bit of a wind out there, but you get a few thousand feet in the air and the temperatures actually get warmer with height, and that is keeping things stable, keeping a lot of those pollutants down near the ground. So if you have waited to mow the lawn or fill up the car, you probably don't need an excuse not to do that today, but maybe hold off till tomorrow or definitely later tonight. It's going to be a humid night. We'll see the humidity continue to increase. Storm chances are back as soon as tomorrow, and they are going to linger. Not many changes for the weekend. We'll show you when things do change coming up here in a few minutes. Okay, okay Ben. A 31 year old man from Ann Arbor is arrested and charged with stabbing three people. Jonathan Franklin is charged with three counts of assault with intent to do great bodily harm and three counts of assault with a dangerous weapon. It happened Sunday at the intersection of East Liberty and South Division. Investigators believe alcohol played a factor. The Republican plan to repeal and replace Obamacare has hit the skids once again. The decision comes after four senators came out against it late last night. Republican leaders say they're not giving up. So what comes next? Blaine Alexander, for one, she's in Washington tonight. Blaine? Well, Devin, repeal and replace is now officially a no-go. So Republican leaders say let's just repeal. But even some GOP senators say that would only lead to a big mess. After another health care defeat from Republicans, frustration. I'm certainly disappointed for seven years I've been hearing repeal and replace from Congress. Scolding. Congress needs to do their job, and Congress needs to do their job now. And from the Senate leader, a scramble for Plan B. We will now try a different way to bring the American people relief from Obamacare. That different way? Repeal now, replace later. But almost immediately, three GOP senators rejected that idea, effectively stopping the plan in its tracks. To repeal it completely with no idea what it's going to be replaced with is not the right approach. Just an indefinite hold on this just creates more chaos and confusion. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell says he may push for a repeal only vote, well, even knowing it might right. fail. The president's plan? Uh, we're not going to own it. I'm not going to own it. I can tell you the Republicans are not going to own it. We'll let Obamacare fail, and then the Democrats are going to come to us, and they're going to say, how do we fix it? A political battle on Capitol Hill with the health care future of millions hanging in the balance. And today, a spokesperson for President Obama's foundation called the bill's defeat a momentous achievement. In Washington, Blaine Alexander, Local 4. All right, Blaine, 11 governors, including five Republicans, five Democrats, one independent, also came out against a straight repeal. Comerica Park in the process of transforming from a baseball field to a soccer pitch, getting ready for the big major soccer exhibition match coming up tomorrow night. Yeah, check this video out that we got today from the field. The goals have gone up and finishing touches are underway. No doubt it's been a busy week for grounds crews. Transition from when we went from baseball to Metallica to baseball to the concert has probably been our most challenging that we've had at the ballpark. Um, but again, it's something that we look forward to. Yeah, indeed, the International Champions Cup is tomorrow night between AS Roma and Paris 
Saint Germain. New at five. I'm thinking Roma just because it's going to be hot. <laughs> uh, we are just getting started here at 5 o'clock. Much more ahead in this next hour, including a bride to be killed. And investigators say a police officer pulled the trigger. And a Michigan priest goes on trial for the sex assault of another priest. And here's Nick. A feel good story for you here on this Tuesday. A mother goes into delivery. Her baby is only 25 weeks old, and that baby is going to be okay. I was on cloud nine. I mean, I felt great. You know, I was like, oh, wow, my first one actually lived. This is awesome. You will meet that paramedic who has only been on the job for a couple of weeks and the entire team who helped save a baby boy. All right, Nick, but first, she's one tough judge. But now Judge Vonda Evans is opening up about a very frightening experience. It was very scary because it was in my personal space. What happened to her outside the courtroom that left her no choice but to call the police when we come back. New at six. A number of car break-ins in an isolated spot near downtown. You shouldn't have to live like that at all. I keep telling my wife, you gotta move. Who's to blame, the apartment complex or police? We'll get to the bottom of it. Okay, Jason, plus the shocking statements this man made behind bars about his ex-wife and children that have Michigan's Attorney General fighting to keep him locked up. All right, now here at five, Judge Vonda Evans has earned a reputation in Detroit for not taking any nonsense at the bench. Yeah, and she never shies away from confrontation, but this weekend something shook her to the core. Our Jamie Edmonds has more. Young lady, you can work and go to school, but you can't if you smoke and weed. Judge Vonda Evans is known for her no nonsense decision making inside her courtroom. But when she was faced with a stalker online, she admits she was shaken. It was very scary because it was in my personal space. On Saturday, at Judge Vonda was contacted by a man on Twitter. His messages were inappropriate, so she blocked him. He then created a second account. The messaging continued, and that's when she responded to him. I then indicated to him that I would be going to the police, at which time you know, he said, please stop. I won't do it again. The judge believed she had handled it until she found 30 previously unseen Facebook messages from the very same person. Multiple pictures of genitalia, um, statements made to when I come for you. At that point, I felt I had no choice but to really take these seriously. The police got involved and found the mentally ill man living in Atlanta with his brother. Judge Evans believes that the threat is gone and will not press any charges, but she is speaking out about the ordeal because you don't have to be victimized by unconsensual contact. I am on this one woman crusade to say, if it's happening to you, speak up. And that is why she talked to us, frankly. She wants other women out there to know whether you're high profile or not. This is not okay. And you really shouldn't just brush it aside. If it's happening, you should call police. Uh, Jamie Edmonds, back to you. Yeah, Jamie, I'm interested to know, did she know who this person was? Kim, I asked her that. Is this someone maybe that had come through her courtroom? She said no. She has been involved in some high-profile cases. She thinks maybe he just saw her online. And, you know, some of her friends are saying, well, then just get off social media. And she said, why should I have to do that? I like to empower people and connect with people, and I will not get off social media. Yeah, and she Back does a good you. job at that, too. Okay, Jamie, thank you. All right, Ben's turn now, and uh, he came through with as he promised yeah back to hot and humid and sticky and all that we don't again, have huh? to like it but he did yeah, come through yeah. we did get i it. wish i would have blown <laughs> yeah <up for> <laughs> uh, but you know it's not real surprising because you look at the averages they're at their peak right now yeah. this is our typically Hottest our part of the summer yeah, yeah. uh so what we see is what we get, I guess. <laughs> uh, temperatures are in the mid 80s outside, which is very close to average. It's just not so good that we've got the humidity on top of it. Uh, compared to yesterday, these numbers are warmer, especially here in our north zone. A little bit more of a pronounced difference. 11 degrees warmer up there in Lapeer uh, compared to our 5 p.m. temperatures yesterday. But you start factoring in that humidity. Look at the heat index. Even though it's only in the mid 80s here, you can see low, even mid 90s down here in parts of Indiana and Ohio. That's coming in our direction. 
Luckily, we'll be able to stay away from this mess. Uh, 97 in Peoria and a big 100 out in Springfield, Illinois for a heat index right now. So the humidity will continue to creep higher. Temperatures will rise somewhat, but we're only probably talking a couple degrees on top of where we're at right now. And then we got to start talking storm chances because they come back tomorrow. Cold front starts making its way south and we could start seeing some activity fire about the midday hours tomorrow. A little bit better chance in the afternoon and a little bit better chance in our south and possibly metro zones here as that front continues to squash all of the activity uh, further into the southern part of our viewing area. And then even as that front pretty much hangs around, it looks like we're going to keep thunderstorm chances around through Thursday, Friday and the upcoming weekend as well. And really not going to see an appreciable change until we get into Tuesday of next week. So hope you like heat and humidity because that's about all we've got on the menu. Let's look at high temperatures. And again, this is what the thermometer is going to say tomorrow. Close to 90 degrees, 89 in the city and also at the airport. We've got that southwest wind that's going to be bringing in that heat tomorrow. Probably touching 90 in a couple spots here in our south zone. Lambertville, Luna Pier and Monroe hitting that mark. West zone temperatures, not a whole lot cooler. Mid 80s generally, a couple upper 80s down here towards Ann Arbor and Canton. And even in our coolest spot in the area in our north zone, uh, we're still talking temperatures in the mid and possibly upper 80s, but it is going to still feel like the 90s with that higher level of humidity. So those comfortable sleeping nights are done. 68 degrees tonight and that humidity continues to rise, especially as we get towards tomorrow morning. Skies will be mainly clear, at least through the evening hours, and then we'll see a few extra clouds as we head towards tomorrow morning. We just rubber stamp this forecast right through the end of the seven day uh, here, all uh, really on through Monday. Thunderstorm chances six of the seven days, and you can start to tell when those morning lows get cooler next week that humidity will drop late Monday. Uh, we'll finally see the temperatures drop on Monday afternoon, but I'll tell you, it's a stretch there yeah. uh, where we're talking temperatures close to 90. Heat index readings will top that mark for the entire time. Yeah. All right. Well, she has spent uh, decades giving back to her community. Now she's getting the favor returned. New here at 5 will show you the incredible gift she received today. And it is the power of negative thinking. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, the hidden impact that negative thoughts could be having on your health and what you can do to send them packing. It's 50 times more potent than heroin, and an amount smaller than this penny can be deadly. The new warning about fentanyl tomorrow starting at 5. In good health, the power of negative thinking. And we all know negative thoughts aren't good for our psyche, but experts say there is a physical impact as well. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain, Doc. Well, Devin and Kimberly, you know, for years, doctors have suspected that attitudes and thoughts can influence our overall health. Well, the latest research suggests negative thinking may predispose us to early aging, making us old before our time. You've heard of the power of positive thinking, but thinking negative thoughts may be just as impactful. While there are different types of negative thinking, experts say some may be particularly harmful. One is uh, just cynical hostility where, you know, we stew a lot. We're kind of uh, suspicious. We're pretty certain uh, the world or folks are against us, and it stays with us. It keeps some of the stress chemicals like cortisol circulating in our system too long. Cleveland Clinic psychologist Scott B. says pessimism, always predicting doom and gloom, also keeps stress chemicals high, as does dredging up past events over and over. But it's not just stress. The latest research finds hostile or cynical people show more genetic signs of premature aging. They also tend to get more cardiovascular disease, and they face a higher risk of dying at a younger age. B. says when we're engaged in the outside world and not in our own heads, we can better handle these negative thought patterns. The key is to learn to recognize that thoughts are just thoughts. Often we're fighting, we're trying to suppress the thought. But you could say, I'm allowed to think. Yeah, I'm, I'm just allowed to have thoughts. And, you know, maybe notice thoughts without trying to fix them or without trying to solve a problem. But just noticing, that's a thought. Now, B says getting out of your own head is a process that takes practice and if done right, can be used throughout life. He notes you don't want to try and suppress your negative thoughts because that creates tension and it tends to overload our brains. The goal is to think freely and then just move on to other things. It's the law of attraction. It's easier said than done, though. I mean, it, 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 it takes a lot of discipline to right, get those negative, negative thoughts. Negativity does beget negativity yeah. because it's shared with people around you, if anything, mm -hmm. and kind of reflected back at you. I believe that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, Doc. Thanks, Doc.
new at 5.30. Demanding answers. Brand new details after a Minneapolis police officer shoots and kills a bride-to-be. What investigators don't have that's raising new questions in the case. Your computer, your iPhone, they could both be causing serious problems to the health of your skin. A local dermatologist has that warning new tonight. Today I would like to show you more of the personable side of one of the Detroit paramedics here. A guy or a team, I should say, who helped save a 25 week old baby and one of them just started. With some Talk about a special delivery. A group of Detroit paramedics swoop in and save the day as a baby is born prematurely. And to make matters worse, this Detroit baby was breached and had the cord wrapped around its neck. But as Nick Monticelli reports tonight, thanks to quick thinking paramedics, the baby's going to be OK. Listen, this is a pretty great story as it is already. A baby delivered at 25 weeks, essentially saved because of the guys working on Medic 8 that day. And then you find out that one of the guys had only been on the job for three weeks. It may seem quite calm in this condo complex on East Larned in Detroit, but about a month ago, it was anything but. I was thinking this isn't good. Paramedic James Lacroix was working on Medic 8 on June 24th. They got a call about a woman who was only 25 weeks pregnant, but she's delivering her baby inside of her condo. When Detroit paramedics got there, a foot was already out. Since you can't see the head, and because it comes out last, you don't really know what's going on. To make matters worse, the umbilical cord was wrapped around the little boy's neck. With each push, the cord was almost acting like a noose. I tried getting the cord out from around the baby's head, but I couldn't. It was too tangled. Also on that call was probationary paramedic Steve Andary. This was his first birth. Oh, and this was only his third week on the job. Another paramedic somehow unwrapped that cord. The baby wasn't moving. It didn't look the best. They started doing CPR on the little guy and rushed him to Children's Hospital. And even though he was only 25 weeks old, doctors finished what the paramedics started and saved him. I was on cloud nine. I mean, I felt great. You know, I was like, oh, wow, my first one actually lived. This is awesome. We deal with a lot of tough things. And because of all their hard work that day, <laughs> today they were awarded for saving a life that started early and unpleasant. Maybe this boy can be cut a break and, <laughs> and have some good times ahead of him. Hey, Detroit, Nick Monticelli, yeah. Local 4. Now, we tried talking to the mom today. No one answered their door, so we couldn't get a picture of the little one. The fire department says the newborn is still in the NICU. Well, if you like it sticky outside, well, you probably like today, right? <laughs> some yeah, people definitely. must like the humidity. That's true. Uh, you need to find that neighbor that's got a pool. Oh, and go jump in and relax. That's or the right. slip and slide. That works too. Oh, that yeah, would be Ours a good idea. Ours is really popular. <laughs> <laughs> you can come on over, Ben. <laughs> I, I may do that. Uh, I want to show you the heat index because this is going to be changing as we get into the next few days. The air temperature is in the mid 80s. It feels like it's about uh, 85, 86 out there. Not a whole lot of difference between the air temperature and that heat index. But what we start to look at is the dew point. And even though uh, this is a little bit harder, harder to understand than the relative humidity. This is a perfect example of why we use it. These numbers in the mid 60s, that's muggy. But watch what happens as we get into the next couple days. Some of these numbers after we get in through uh, past Wednesday morning start spiking into the 70s. This is more of what we felt like last week where we had that uh, ridiculous tropical level humidity and we'll probably see it again as we get into Thursday. That is going to be leading to thunderstorm chances too. We'll talk about that and see what the weekend looks like all coming up in a few minutes. All right, Ben, across Michigan tonight, we've got stories from Huron County up in the thumb, also from Flint. But we want to start in Presque Isle tonight. That's where jury selection is underway for a priest accused of sexually assaulting another priest back in February. Reverend Sylvester Abwaka was the pastor at St. Ignatius Church in Rogers City when he was arrested. Police say the alleged crimes happened while the victim was sleeping. The defense argues it was consensual. Now to Huron County, where the body of a missing kayaker has been recovered. 22-year-old Curtis Herbon of St. Clair Shores was found this morning in shallow water, less than a mile offshore. Authorities say Herbon was not wearing a life jacket and that he did not know how to swim. They believe he panicked or had a difficult time when he went into the water. 
Now to Flint, uh, a man has won his appeal after being convicted of attacking a teenager. The Michigan Supreme Court threw out the conviction of Tamando Denson, who was accused of attacking his daughter's boyfriend after finding them in a bedroom. The court says Denson's trial was spoiled when the prosecutor referred to an unrelated assault from 12 years earlier. Past acts can be introduced only under limited circumstances. More questions tonight about a bride to be killed by police in Minneapolis. Justine Diamond's death is now being called a homicide. Let's uh, turn things over to Kim, who's following this for us. Kim? Devin, at this hour, the medical examiner is confirming she died from a gunshot wound. Meanwhile, local leaders and her family push for more information. Did you know you were so powerful? Isn't that amazing? Known for her light as a spiritual teacher and healer, many are remembering 40-year-old Justine Damon. And I am so grateful for my life being touched by her. The Australian bride-to-be was shot and killed by a police officer. She called for help late Saturday night, reporting a possible assault. Two officers responded, but what led to the shooting remains unknown. Shots fired. Can we get EMS code 3 Washburn? and 51st Street, Joe Wendell. But I have the same questions everybody has. What happened? The mayor of Minneapolis and others are calling for accountability. Why were the officers' body cameras not turned on? And why did the squad car camera fail to capture the shooting? Damon's father spoke publicly for the first time. We thought yesterday was our worst nightmare, but we awoke to the ugly truth and it hurt even more. Officer Mohammed Noor reportedly fired his weapon from the passenger seat of the squad car. He and his partner are on administrative leave as a state agency is now handling the investigation. Meanwhile, Damon's family is trying to come to terms with what happened. The death of Justine is a loss to everyone who knew her. And now instead of a wedding next month, her family is planning a funeral. We only ask that the light of justice shine down on the circumstances of her death. A simple ask of an explanation to bring a heartbreaking family and community some closure. State agency conducting the inquiry says it will provide more details once interviews with the officers are complete. Its findings will be reported to the county attorney's office. Karen. A small plane crashes on a golf course that happened in Arizona. Two people on board were killed. Officials say the pilot reported mechanical trouble and said the plane was unable to reach the airport. The FAA and National Transportation Safety Board are investigating. The former Speaker of the U.S. House, Dennis Hastert, is now out of a federal prison. Bureau of Prisons website shows Hastert is now in the custody of a residential reentry management field office, which oversees inmates going to home confinement and halfway houses. A judge sentenced Hastert to 15 months in prison last year after the former lawmaker pleaded guilty to violating banking laws in a hush money case. For decades, Alice Ham has served her Berkeley community, sharing her talents as a pottery artist with local kids. But today, it was time for the community to help her. Photojournalist Jim McArdle shows us how they did it. So I started uh, doing art shows with my mom when I was a little girl. I've been making pottery for about 30 years, coming up on 30. I'm in need of having both my knees replaced. It is very difficult to get around. This is normally a I've always been a very independent person. We're here at Alice Ham's house in Berkeley. What we're doing is complete tear off the roof. Yeah, Alice uh, applied for a, uh, some assistance through Rebuilding Together, Rebuilding Together Oakland County. Um, now we go around and repair all, any bad wood. All the shingles are aged. Hanson's Roofing is doing some wonderful work donating time and materials. It means a lot to the homeowner. A lot of them can't afford to hire someone to do this for them or they can't physically do it themselves. That's going to look awesome. She deserves it. Very nice lady. Because of all the help that I've received, that it, it, it leaves me to be able to focus more on my art. Our goal is to help keep people's homes safe and healthy and to help people stay in their homes. And it feels awesome to be involved in it. I signed up for it, so. When the chips are down and someone helps you, it's easy to be appreciative. And that's really our goal and our objective, is to work together to help people, and, and that's really what it's all about. There's a lot of people coming together with a lot of different skill sets to help out. Really, are. Berkeley is such a special community. Yeah, really it cool. really is. Yeah. And you know what? You can tell how special she is because they volunteered uh -huh. their time. And did you see all Speaking that cool skill art? sets, yeah, all of, like, her, all of her ceramics Hang in front of her. Really cool. Yeah. Well, he's a miniature superhero complete with a cape. Head here at 530. What this little guy is doing all across the country this summer to say thank you.
Also, he had nowhere to turn. A man caught in that violent flash flood in Arizona is sharing video of his ordeal. Hank? The bright light coming from your iPhone, the light coming off your computer. Could it affect your skin? You may be surprised to see what a local dermatologist is saying now.